Good evening, everybody. Adrian here with Suspect Sky. We've had some big news in the field of fast radio bursts, also known as FRBs. If you've been following this channel for some time, you will know and recognize that I have been a proponent of FRBs being one of the most peculiar phenomena that astronomers are observing right now, and they continue to be so. So yesterday, January 7th, 2019, we've had some big news. But before we get to that, I just want to do a quick overview of what makes these strange signals from space so interesting. What you're looking at here is a graph. Uh, these are the initial FRBs detected by the human civilization, plotted against something called dispersion measure, which is actually the measurement of distance, how far away these signals originated from, compared to multiples of the number 187.5. And as you can see, there is a very peculiar uh, relationship to the number 187.5. They appear evenly spaced with a number of signals originating from the exact same equal distance. Now, th this does not mean that they originated from the same location. This just means that in a, uh, a, a spherical sort of uh, perspective that they were originating from exactly the same distance. So this is what uh, piqued my curiosity to begin with, with this phenomena. And again, uh, if you've been following this channel, I've been looking at this since uh, early 2014. Every conference I've ever been to, I've incorporated this, the, these very strange signals from space uh, in some way into the presentation. So I've been following this uh, very closely for many years. Unlike most Wikipedia articles, uh, if you actually go to the Wikipedia article uh, entitled Fast Radio Burst, you will notice uh, that there is a graph that is actually fairly well maintained. In addition uh, to listing the FRB's uh, name here, uh, so you, as you can see, for example, FRB 010621, what this actually translates to is uh, June 21st, 2001, is the first detected FRB. Uh, this was not realized until late uh, 2007. So if you go through here, you'll, you'll notice that the graph uh, has information such as dates and times uh, at the apparent megahertz frequency for which it was detected. You also see the right ascension and declination as well as dispersion measure, which, which if you remember is a uh, estimate of the distance uh, at which these signals originated from. If you scroll all the way through here, uh, you can see this new one called the first, uh, first detection of an FRB at radio frequencies below 700 megahertz by the CHIME uh, radio astronomy satellite, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, radio uh, astronomy observatory. This is actually located in Canada. But what's actually the most fascinating, which you can find in this Nature article here, is that the detected FRBs involved include the second known example of a repeater. This is a repeating instance of an FRB. The vast majority of FRBs are non-repeating. They are single one-off events, which has led many astronomers to conclude that FRBs are produced by one-off cataclysmic events, such as the collision of asteroids into a neutron star, uh, or other bizarre sort of astrophysical phenomena. But the presence of this one repeating fast radio burst, uh, which you can find here uh, by the Arecibo Telescope in Australia, uh, which is called FRB 121102, which means November 2nd, 2012. This repeating fast radio burst has been repeating for many, many years, and we've picked up dozens and dozens of signals from this singular instance of an FRB. Some additional background uh, is if you look at FRB 121102, this is the prior known uh, repeating FRB, the Breakthrough Initiative applied artificial intelligence algorithms uh, through the Breakthrough Listen project to identify were there more FRBs uh, detected uh, involved uh, with our radio astronomy observatories? And they actually detected in 2018 about 94 more FRBs as part of this AI-induced uh, scanning of prior recorded data. So 2018 has been a huge year for FRBs. 
And it's just getting more interesting with the Canadian Observatory releasing that they've now found the second repeating burst. So why is this important? Well, uh, the most important thing that I would say with this is the initial repeater was considered an anomaly that most FRBs are likely to be these one-off cataclysmic events and that this repeater was just some kind of one-off anomaly. We can't, we can't explain it. But now with the CHIME telescope in Canada confirming that other instances of a repeating FRB can occur, it's now become commonly known, uh, or at least more commonly accepted, that FRBs perhaps could possess a repeating nature. Now this gets really interesting when we start to consider a few other facts. Looking at this image, this is an example of what an FRB is. This is from an article uh, related to the linear polarization of FRBs. So what does linear polarization mean in, in normal English? What it means is that it is a straight shot signal. This is not an omnidirectional signal. This is not a sphere of expanding electromagnetic energy that just spreads outward in, in all directions. These are directed signals. Now, it was commonly thought that we just happened to fall into a scenario whereby we are getting hit every once in a while by a non-repeating FRB and that the single instance of a repeating FRB was this strange anomaly that we couldn't explain and it doesn't make sense within the model. But now that we found a second repeating FRB, we really need to start rethinking our assumptions and really need to start rethinking what these signals are. So these are linear polarized, these are lines of signals that at least in two instances seem to be particularly connected to the Earth. This could be through a process called quantum entanglement. This could be through a process of artificial uh, targeting. So some artificial uh, signal is being directed towards the Earth. Or it could be some very, very bizarre phenomena whereby the Earth and these extra galactic signal sources are somehow uh, connected in some way. So whatever FRBs are, they're going to rewrite our understanding of the universe. And we've been saying this on this channel for years. So now with the confirmation of a second repeater, uh, we really have to start rethinking our understanding of what FRBs are. Really quickly, if you go to Archive, A-R-X-I-V, this is a free uh, source where you can find the latest information uh, from physicists and astronomers. If you do a quick search for fast radio bursts, you'll find a number of articles, uh, hundreds actually, uh, whereby everybody's trying to guess what is causing these signals. And no theory to date has successfully created a bridge between the repeating and the non-repeating instances of FRBs. And now, as of yesterday, January 7th, 2019, we now have a second instance of a repeater FRB so the mystery is just compounded. Uh, it's so mysterious because if you look, and we have presented this at numerous Observing the Frontier conferences, and this will be actually a topic of the second book that this channel will be releasing, uh, is if you look at what the number 187.5 is, uh, and this comes from uh, Northeastern Illinois University, but this is uh, true of all thermodynamic models. So this is uh, a document related to macro states Entro, uh, entropic models, and if you look here, the simplest macro state of, of a thermodynamic model actually ends up being the number 187.5. So that, that's a lot of uh, physics talk, uh, it's a lot of scientific talk. What that actually means is that the number 187.5 is the least likely to occur in nature event. So it gets very interesting when you start to think of is, is the number related to the dispersion measure, is it related to perhaps a message? And if you recall from various SETI programs, we often focus on the hydrogen line, which is our focus of frequencies uh, related to what frequency does the most fundamental element of the universe, hydrogen, what frequency does it resonate at? Uh, and 
I've often argued that perhaps 187.5 could just be another uh, extraterrestrial way, perspective, if you have, uh, if you will, uh, way of looking at how to transmit intelligence mathematically to other civilizations. Uh, and what's also fascinating is if you look at this graph of the list of fast radio bursts over at Wikipedia, if you start to drill down into the dispersion measures and you start to divide them by 187.5, uh, that's the column here uh, that I'm highlighting, the vast majority of them are either equal multiples or within 0.1 uh, equal multiples of 187.5 or within 0.1 of being a half multiple. There are a few stragglers or outliers that I can't uh, explain quite yet, uh, but it might be related to a margin of error related to the fact that dispersion measure is actually our best guess at how far away this signal has originated from. Going back to archive, so if you go through the uh, fast radio burst uh, uh, articles here, you can find that there are a number, a number of recent articles trying to explain what fast radio bursts are, uh, how we can interpret them, what we should do with this information, and nobody in the mainstream right now has a good guess what they are. Uh, the final thing I'd like to leave you with, uh, in addition to the fact that we've now identified a second repeater, uh, which is huge news, it means that there is some special connection between this planet and at least two instances of repeating linearly polarized, meaning a straight, uh, a straight shot signal, uh, some special connection between our planet and the source of, in at least two instances, fast radio bursts that are now repeating, sending us multiple signals as we sort of swing around uh, and, you know, relative to one another, these are, these are occurring billions of light years away. Uh, so imagine the statistical improbability of a straight, shot, a straight shot signal reaching our planet numerous times from the same source. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, what's most fascinating to me is when I looked at the graph uh, over here and unfortunately the location of the second repeater has not been released. That'll be released tomorrow uh, and hopefully I'll have that information as soon as possible. But if you look at the location of the initial repeater and you, you check out uh, 121102 uh, has a right ascension of 5 hours 32 minutes and a declination of 33 degrees by five. If you plot that in a sky map, it puts you right dead center in Orion's belt. So this is pretty fascinating and I don't know, I'd love to hear your comments, love to hear your thoughts on this. Fast radio bursts continue to be, in my opinion, the most exciting phenomena in astronomy right now and they have been for me at least since early 2014. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts and look forward to hopefully tomorrow some more information being released. This is Suspect Sky, signing out.